these are the items that you will be uh, receiving. Uh, the new counting head, the new tablet guides, the new uh, controller, and then the new HMI, the QA terminal to test the counting head, the counting head cable, and this is a test cable that you can use for testing the HMI without having to uh, remove the old one. This one, uh, I will send it off with a terminal block and a ribbon cable so that you can test the um, counting head without having to uh, remove the original uh, cable. So that's just for, for convenience. So after installation, you can return this cable to me and then this uh, terminal block with the ribbon cable. Now the first step is to ensure that the new counting head will physically fit in your machine. So you're going to put this head together. Top lock. This is just to keep the, uh, the tablet guide uh, steady. They don't have to be very tight, but uh, just a little bit, and then the bottom one. Like that, similar to the old one. So then you put this one into uh, your machine. To see if it fits. If that fits, you can put that one clamp uh, on the bottom with the slides in between. Again, it's the same as the uh, as the old one, like so. And if that all fits. Uh, we go to the next step. Suppose that for some reason it doesn't fit uh, perfectly, then we still continue with uh, checking the rest, but you, um, you take the, uh, the head out and then you just test it on, uh, on the table, like I'm going to do uh, afterwards, just to ensure that uh, the rest of the upgrade is, uh, is working. Now when the head is installed in the machine, uh, you have to check that uh, all these channels align with the channels on the vibratory trays, that the trays do not run against the, uh, the top of the, of the tablet guide. So just physically check if everything uh, seems fine. Um, everything is uh, measured up using the, the drawings you send, so it, it should not be a, a problem. But uh, in case there, there is an issue, then um, we just need to figure out afterwards how we're gonna solve the, uh, the issue. But uh, I expect that you know, it should just work as uh, the way it is. The next step is to change the MT4 controller with the new XMT4 controller. And your MT4 controller still has one extra board on the top, which is specifically for the EFS head. So that one is not uh, going to be used. It's got some uh, power cables on this side. And then on the other side is a cable that uh, provides or, or that reads the, the counting signals. Yeah, so that's the board on the top. So I'm not talking about that board at the moment. Um, how do we swap it over? It's easy. Um, you see some uh, connectors here at the bottom and you see some connectors here on the board on the top. And they are the same as the ones that are here on, on this, this new board. So these three here is these three here and these four on the top is these four on this side. 
Then we got the plug for your uh, the way probe that goes in that one. We got a 24 volt supply that goes in here. And this is an extra 24 volt supply that one can plug in here or you can leave it out. It doesn't really matter because it already has the power supply over there. But this board uses a separate power supply. So these two are parallel, so you can plug it uh, in or leave it out. Um, this cable goes is the communication cable to the HMI. Same as that one. And then here we got the vibrators. So we got uh, four vibrators, so the, the front, middle and back, or the other way around. I think this is the hopper, hopper, middle and front. Uh, the nozzle vibrator and your uh, power input. It's the same as here, power input, and then the nozzle vibrator, and then front, middle, and the hopper. So the location is pretty much the same on the new board. So you can easily just uh, plug from one board into the other board. The, other board. Uh, the mounting plate, I think, will also be uh, the same as the uh, original. This one comes from a slightly different machine, but I reckon that the mounting plate is just exactly the same. So you can take those four screws out and then you put the new one in and just put them back into the uh, original holes. So that should not be uh, any problem. This is how it looks like when everything is connected up. So we've plugged in the uh, counting head cable. Uh, it goes to this terminal block and then this ribbon cable goes into uh, this connector over here. Um, this is uh, the, the way probe. I just put some uh, resistors in there so that we can see that it works. Um, these two, I've put some connectors in there with some LEDs so that we can see what the, uh, what the outputs are doing. Normally, normally this ribbon cable is plugged in there and this ribbon cable uh, will go to the valve uh, manifold. Uh, this one goes to another terminal block on your machine and this one also goes to another terminal block. Here you can see the, uh, the test cable that I supplied for the HMI. The HMI can work on 12 volt AC as well as uh, 24 volt DC. The original HMI on the, on the post on your machine is 12 volt AC. So once you uh, mount it on that post, you will connect it up to, uh, to this power input over here, 12 volt AC. But for testing, you just uh, put it on a table, connect it with that supplied cable, and then the communication goes in here, and the 24 volt DC, we take it from there. The same with the, uh, the counting head. You just leave the original cables in your machine for the moment, and you put this cable outside of your machine and just connect it up this way so that you can uh, test it without uh, having to uh, commit to the full installation at that time. So you can see that it works once you've convinced yourself well it works and then you can install the HMI on the post and you can feed the new cable to the, uh, through, through, through your machine. So when this is all done, uh, I forgot the power input here. But when this is all done, uh, I, I put these uh, light bulbs here. Uh, th these will be the vibrators on your machine, but I test it here on this desk with uh, just with the light bulb so that we can see it works. And but I still need to connect the power to that one. With everything connected, we can now power it up.
the first thing we check is the QI terminal to see how the counting head is performing. We can see here that all the channels are above 80%. Uh, the LED drive is at 21%. Sensitivity is set to 92%. There's 12 channels and the timer is one uh, millisecond. I've said that uh, before, so that would, that would not have changed. The next thing you do is check the track sensors. So that's the sensors that uh, indicate that there's uh, bottles or no bottles on the track or that there's a bottle backup. So basically it's uh, the track is empty and no bottles or the track is full and then yeah, obviously the machine will stop uh, running because it can't uh, feed more bottles on the track. So if you stand in front of the machine, then the track closest to you is, the, I call that the front uh, track and the track furthest away is the rear track. So you check the two sensors for the front track and you check the two sensors for the rear track. Then we go to the diagnostic screen. Uh, so if this is the protection key. So if it is protected, then you'll miss the um, uh, the recipes and the, the other uh, button so it needs to be switched on then the the diagnostic screen is over here so that's the, this button and then you can see here the tray clamp so the tray clamp is the first thing we uh, we check we turn it on and that should lock your uh, vibratory trays uh, you can see here the input from the, uh, from the way probe. You can tar it to, to zero if you want by, uh, by pressing the, the zero button over there. Because there should not be any weight on the, on the tray at, at this stage. Then the next thing we do is we go to the next screen and then we can test the, uh, the bottle gates. So we test the first uh, front gate, uh, set it to uh, test mode. So now we can see that this LED is flashing over there. That should be the LED that controls the, uh, the gate from the front track to index the bottles. So check that that is indeed the front gate. Then you can do the rear gate. So you turn that one off, you turn this one on. Then the other one is flashing over there. That should be the, uh, the gate on the rear track. And uh, also you need to test the, uh, the flip-flop, the diverter flap. So you can turn this one off and then turn the flip-flop on. Then you can see on this output is the flip-flop and then you should see the flap move forwards and backwards. And also when you test these things, uh, that should be the only thing that, that moves at that time. Yeah? So if you test the front gate, then the only thing that moves should be the front gate and the rear gate. The only thing that moves should be the rear gate. Same with the flip-flop. So if that works, you can test the, uh, the 12 slides. Uh, you can go to slide sequence one, and then it will sequence the 12 slides from one to 12. So I do uh, one, it, uh, it closes and opens, and then two close open, two, three close open. So um, every time you should see uh, one flap coming forward, so towards you, so it closes off the channel. 
and then afterwards it goes back so basically all the channels would be uh, would be open and it does that in a sequence from 1 to 12 and then it starts again at number 1 and we can turn off that test mode the next thing we do is test the counting head to see if all the uh, counting inputs come on so we take for example a screwdriver we insert it in uh, channel 1 and then we can see on the terminal that it tells you there is an alarm channel block 1 you can just leave it there and then you can do channel 2 so you can see that the 1 changes in a 2 and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 so that's all good then we need to do a reset to get rid of this uh, alarm so we press the OK button we go to the home screen this is your uh, reset button so we reset the machine and now we can turn on the conveyor so you power on the conveyor you go to the diagnostic screen and then uh, what you should see here is that the conveyor running is green uh, vibrators enable is also green if those two are not green then uh, the machine cannot run and then you feed some uh, some bottles on the track so the the no bottle indicator should then turn off uh, for the front track this is the front track and the rear no bottle should also be off so it should look the screen should look like this the flip-flop diverter it might be in the front or the back so this one might be on or off but uh, uh, this is what you should uh, see and also if the flip-flop diverter is uh, off like it is here so if it's not green it's off if you drop a product into one of the 12 uh, channels then that product should land in the bottle on the front tray so you need to check that so that the flip-flop uh, when it's off it should feed the front track when the flip-flop is on so it's in the other position the product should feed in the rear track so that's something you have to check otherwise you may have to uh, invert that so if this is uh, the way it looks like over here then these four indicators should also be green and the conveyor should be green as well because the conveyor is running at this stage uh, then we can reset the machine reset and then we can index uh, one bottle from each track so we index one bottle from the front track and remove it yeah. so that's a reject basically and we feed one from the rear track and remove that one as well now when we've come to this point we are ready to start the machine so we start it up here and then the vibrators uh, should be running ensure that the front vibrator is not hitting against the, uh, the tablet guide then you can uh, check if you can uh, control uh, the vibrator speed so you see uh, front vibrator speed is 75 let's put it on 25 and then you should see the front vibrator that is decreasing in uh, amplitude put it back to 75 then the same thing you do with the middle one so you put the middle on 25 and then the middle one should slow down and uh, the same with the hopper 25 and then the hopper should reduce in, uh, in amplitude 
the hopper on this upgrade is uh, pulsing, as you can see. And also we can check the nozzle vibration. I'm not 100% sure if your machine has that one, but normally if you change the nozzle vibration, then uh, the nozzles should start uh, vibrating when the machine uh, runs. So then we've tested everything and then we can actually uh, run some product. For your first uh, test run, uh, you fill the hopper with your, uh, with your product and then I would recommend to count uh, say 50 pieces per bottle. So you change that one and then you change the product length to the actual length of your, uh, of your product. So if the product is, uh, if it's like a triple zero capsule, you can put uh, 27 millimeters uh, there. If it's shorter, then you, know, you just put the length of the, uh, of the capsule over there for testing your, uh, your first product run. If that product run was then uh, successful, then you can uh, continue the installation with uh, installing the HMI on that uh, post. Uh, so you no longer need that, uh, that test cable that I uh, supplied uh, for that. Um, install the HMI and then do uh, a quick check whether everything is still uh, working after you've changed the uh, HMI to, to the new one. And then uh, you remove the, the cables from the, the, the counting head. So uh, it has two cables, one on the left hand side, one on the right hand side. You take those two uh, out and then you feed the new cable on the left hand side because that one is closest to the, um, to the controller. And the one on the right hand side, yeah, we, we don't uh, need that one anymore. Um, you power it back up, so everything is then installed. And then you test with the QA terminal if the counting head is still uh, the way it should be. And then uh, the installation is, uh, is done. Uh, I forgot to mention one thing. Uh, if you test with this, uh, the test lead that I provided to, uh, to test the uh, HMI while it's still outside of the, of the machine and not on the post. So we tested with uh, the 24 volt DC. Uh, the communication and everything runs to the, um, to the controller. The only thing is that the up and down, which is uh, this would move the machine up and this would move the machine down. Uh, those two will not work yet because those cables need to come from uh, the original uh, HMI. So you'll have to look at the instructions uh, for that one. But when you put this HMI on the post, then the up and down buttons will, uh, will work. So this is how it would run on uh, an actual counter. Uh, this one is a bit different from your one, but it's, uh, it's still relatively uh, uh, similar. So, um, the gate test. Yeah, this is the indexing gate. Well, this machine has a reject arm, but... Uh, the slide sequence. Slide sequence two, they will go uh, much faster. Okay, so the reset. 
index, bottle index. And I need to do a reject confirmation. Okay. And then testing the uh, vibrators. Or let's first do the pre-ray probe. Yeah. You can see uh, here, so although there's no products on the probe, on the plate, the middle plate, if you move the plate, you can see that the live output uh, changes. Normally it should be zero and there's nothing on the plate, so you can reset it, like so. It's dancing around a bit, but eventually it will uh, settle for zero. And then if you go to the settings, you can see that the tar is approximately zero. If you put some some weight on that. Uh, let's put some weight on that. And you see that it will increase the tar weight. So then the vibrators, if we start the machine. Then the front vibrator, flow at 25. You can feel that it reduces the vibration. And then the middle one, you can feel it. And the hopper, same thing. The only difference here is that for the, for the hopper, uh, this one only has a hopper speed, but your one ha also has a hopper duty cycle. So with the hopper uh, speed, like this one, the hopper will continuously uh, run. While with the duty cycle, you can uh, pulse it. For example, it goes uh, like half a second on and half a second off and half a second on, half a second off. So you can uh, change the feed by changing the, the, the vibration, the amplitude basically of the, uh, of the hopper vibrator. And then you can also change it by changing the duty cycle. And um, that's done to get a better uh, product feed. Normally, if you run at a duty cycle of uh, 50 or 60%, with a bit more vibration on the hopper, then the products will run uh, better than if you run uh, the hopper continuously and then at a, at a lower speed. So that's something that you can, uh, you can play with. And then when you start it, it should run approximately like this.